What's up everyone, it's your boy Norrenrad89 here bringing you another video and you can tell you clicked on this video, you know what we're here to talk about. We're here to re-rank the Evil Dead franchise now that we have Evil Dead Rise out and also this is going to be kind of my spoiler video for Evil Dead Rise as well because it's been a long time, it's been out, a lot of people have already seen it, the film has broke a hundred million dollars worldwide so congratulations to Lee Cronin and the cast and the crew and everybody so like I said today let's get into spoilers and re-ranking the franchise so let's do this, roll it! So let's start right off the bat with just kind of going through the spoilers for Evil Dead Rise and kind of my thoughts on it, kind of more, I wanted to really dive more in depth on it and everything. I gave it an 8.5 out of 10. I still think it's a slam dunk entry into the Evil Dead franchise. And after seeing it a second time, because I did go see it twice in theaters, I do stick by my 8.5 out of 10 rating. So mainly, to be honest though, after my second rewatch of watching the film, I really did understand the main problem with this film. And to be honest, my main negative, I didn't really bring this up in my non-spoiler video, is that I actually think the trailer hurt this film. I don't mean that in terms of like building up the, uh, you know, the momentum towards the film. Of course, it was great marketing. They had a fantastic campaign and really dr building up the hype for Evil Dead Rise. But in terms of what the trailer revealed and all the shots, all the moments, all the scenes, pretty much 75% of the movie is shown in the trailer. I'm not even joking you. Like, I'm talking about the actual gruesome scenes of, you know, like pe people getting their hair ripped off and like scalped, you know what I mean? Someone swallowing glass, someone catching on fire, like all these sequences are in the trailer. So it's like when they happen in the movie, it's just not as potent because it's like, oh, well, we know this sequence is coming up and they actually kind of show it almost in order too. So it was just, that's one thing for me that I noticed with this film on a second watch is that I actually think the trailer kind of hurt this film in terms of showing a little bit too much. But also another negative, let's just get the negatives right out right away, is that I think the characters in here, I still have a hard time grabbing onto them because I feel like they make dumb decisions and there's certain things that happen in this movie that I just think they, sh they shouldn't have happened. Like there's just certain moments where things went down and I was like, oh, okay, like for instance, we have Auntie Beth who like, I'll be looking down because I have character names written down right here. Auntie Beth, our main character and Ellie, the mommy deadite, they have, I love the way they build their relationship and the sisters and the chemistry on screen and there's great acting and building of the characters before everything starts going down. But when stuff starts going down, Auntie Beth literally leaves one of the kids, I believe it's um, Bridget, like alone, like forever while she gets infected, like in the other room. So like, it's a good solid, like long time that Cassie, her and the other brother are just completely ignoring her in that room and stuff goes down you know what i mean like and there's like why they kind of go looking for the book is probably one of the worst out reasons they kind of set it up with the whole fact that yes they're looking for money and they're down and out and they really need money because the building the high-rise apartment building that they live in is being shut down and they're gonna just demolish it and like rebuild other stuff and they're kicking all the tenants out so Ellie and her family, they need money. So the older brother does know that, but for him to really like after an earthquake goes down in the building and a whole like crack opens up like a total like room down below in a parking garage, like no, I don't, it just was really far fetched. So like that kind of thing like bugged me a little bit too, is that the characters in here, they're to that point where they do the dumb things that make the film go forward. And it's like, you have to kind of just get over it because it needs to push the story forward. So like that kind of thing can get kind of annoying. Also, I would say, to be honest, the writing in here wasn't the best when it comes to the Deadite, like what I would call them the Deadite disses, like when the Deadites are really like going at you, digging hard and talking trash at you, you know, talking about the souls that they're going to devour and or how out, like some awesome depraved stuff that the Deadites speak of. I think in this film, they were kind of stupid, like the Deadite one-liners were kind of like, meh. So like that's mainly just kind of judging it against these, because we're talking about the entire franchise, because we're going to be re-ranking the franchise. So it's kind of like this weird franchise that is very consistent. 
it's one of the most consistent horror franchises in my, in my opinion and they've done three films that are basically the same premise the same setup with the camp going to the or going to the cabin we have the same kind of group and number of people you know what i mean they find the book it gets unleashed it goes through all of them and then they find out what they have to do and dismember or bury or set somebody on fire so all those things kind of go down in like three different movies in this franchise. The only ones that kind of branch out really are Evil Dead Rise and Army of Darkness. And now let's lead into some of the positives of amazing things that I think Evil Dead Rise did in terms of even like spoilers was that they connected all the films. The fact that they're going a long way and Lee Cronin's like, no, there's three different volumes of the Necronomicon. And for me, being an Evil Dead fan, a hardcore one, I think we've seen all three versions. I think one of the Necronomicons was the one that we saw with Ash Williams, for example, in this first movie right here. The other Necronomicon is right here in the 2013 film. And then the third volume of the Necronomicon is in Evil Dead Rise, connecting all the films. So I love the fact that they did that because what it does is it just leaves the, op the doors wide open for the future. And that's one of my favorite things that this film has done is that Evil Dead Rise by far has shown that Evil Dead, the franchise, has a really, really bright future ahead and I really enjoy that so that's a huge huge positive and I didn't really talk about that because I didn't want to spoil too much like I said this is more of the spoiler video right here and one other thing is that I actually think the gore in here was pretty serviceable it wasn't to the level of 2013 and for me this film is like god tier status this is my favorite horror film of all time so Evil Dead 2013 it's very hard to come to that film because this one has such a dark annihilistic tone and i think the characters actually go through some more hardcore stuff yes this one you could classify and make the argument that it's more terrifying because it's a family you're watching the kids die and like i'm gonna be spoilers we're talking spoilers the only ones that make it out of here are auntie beth and the youngest sibling cassie the mother ellie and bridget and the oldest son they all die so it's like that's one thing you can say is you make the argument that it's more terrifying that it's the family and you're watching the kids die or your nieces and nephews and you can't stop them from being deadites and you have to fight them. But I still think the characters go through much more hardcore stuff in this film. And Evil Dead 2013 has a much more nihilistic tone. But yeah, Evil Dead Rise is much more kind of a middle ground balance. But I don't think it necessarily committed to either one. It wasn't so gruesome that it was like this film. But it wasn't so comical that it was like Army of Darkness or Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. It kind of towed the line of being right in the middle. Evil Dead Rise, though, does have one of the best opening sequences, though. I must say that. The opening sequence for this film was pretty freaking amazing. Just the title card reveal, all of that. I still, like I said, love 2013. That That's my baby. That's, that's the king of horror films for me. So you're not going to get a lot of times where I'm going to be like, oh, a film trumps this movie because I think that film's pretty much perfect. But yeah, Evil Dead Rise has a pretty slam dunk opening and that title card reveal like, oh my God, when you see the girl just float out of the water, it's like, nah. and like, yeah, that was intense, like man, for real. So there's a lot to love about this film. And that's what I said, my main positive, and I didn't talk about that in my non spoilers was that they left the doors wide open for a bright future for the Evil Dead franchise. And Lee Cronin has already told us that we're going to be getting more films. Another thing that I could kind of say is a mixed and negative is that I did like the gore. And I like the fact that we had a kind of creative and wild kills in this movie. But we did have some side characters that were just like, we didn't really get to know them. I feel like there was a sequence in the middle that was kind of cut out. And it has to deal with when Auntie Beth and then Ellie's on the bed and they know she's already possessed and she has the dead eyed in her and it's kind of that moment when Beth is like I'm never going to get to talk to my sister again but they have these other tenants that are there from the hallway that live like right next door or right down the um, couple rooms down from Ellie and the kids and you don't really get to know them that much at all and like that's one thing I feel like there was a small scene maybe cut out in between there where she asked them for help or went knocking on the door to talk to them so that's another thing is that I think there's some stuff cut out of this one. I'm hoping we get some extra scenes when we get the, the Steelbook or the Blu-ray release that they have the unrated footage and maybe there's some extra scenes that were cut out and maybe that'll actually help the film because I think this film could have been probably about 10 minutes longer and that would have actually helped it.
But like I said, overall in my book, I still stick by my 8.5 out of 10 rating for Evil Dead Rise. It's a slam dunk. And for me right now, it's my favorite horror film of the year so far. I said that in my non-spoiler review, and I commit to that still out of the films that I've seen this year. And I think it's just because horror, it's still really strong. And I think horror is where it's at, and they're making a lot of money with horror films. But for me, as it stands right now, of the catalog that we have for almost... Halfway through the year, I think last year's horror films were better. But we'll see. We still got some time to go. There's going to be maybe some couple surprises because we still got that fall time. We get a lot of horror movies coming out around that time, so I'm waiting to see. But yeah, as it stands so far, I'm still feeling the horror films from last year a bit better than this year. But Evil Dead Rise, I highly suggest going out to theaters and checking this out. Or maybe just waiting. It's going to be on digital pretty soon, and I believe physical media copy comes out next month so i'm excited to pick that up but now what else did you come here for you came for the re-ranking of the franchise and let's knock this bad boy out right away because i have ranked this franchise before but now we're throwing in evil dead rise because we have the new one so coming in last place is not last place really because i think all the films in this franchise are positive like in my book this film is a 7.5 out of 10 and that's army of darkness and for me it's just mainly as as i've gotten older i've grown more to liking the more serious more dark and scary type evil dead films and army of darkness as a kid actually fun fact used to be my favorite and the one that i rewatched the most especially like in that like i want to say 10 to 15 time when i was 10 to 15 years old I would really watch this film a lot. And like I said, that was probably my favorite of the franchise at that time. But yeah, it slipped down a little bit. Up next, we have Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn. And this one might be a hot take because I know a lot of people fancy this one as the best one. They like this one better than the Evil Dead. But for me, Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn, there's some character stuff that I actually don't like in this film. Tiny bit. A little bit of character stuff that I don't like, but this film is still an 8 out of 10 film for me. And the comedy, I laugh and I like this film for real, but like I said, as I've grown older, more personal taste-wise, I've grown to liking the more serious type you know, Evil Dead films. And I do like the fact that Bruce Campbell seems much more comfortable as Ash Williams in this film because you can tell he's much more grown into the role in like Army of Darkness and Evil Dead 2, Dead by Dawn, and especially Ash vs. Evil Dead, the TV show. He's really comfortable with the character at that time. Coming in and third place is going to be Evil Dead Rise, the latest installment in the franchise, and that's not, like I said, not to knock it, it's at the third place, man. This is a pretty awesome bronze medal right there for Evil Dead Rise, and like I said, opening up a bright future for the Evil Dead franchise. There's a lot to love about this, especially Elisa Sutherland's lead performance as Ellie, the Mama Deadite. Fantastic. One of my favorite Deadites that we've ever had in this franchise like she gets to do like a really a lot of cool stuff and like I said a lot of cool effects and I like the way like they really stayed different with the whole you know apartment complex setting they really use that to their advantage of having like the peephole sequence and like an elevator sequence and you know even though one shot was kind of similar to The Shining but I still very much appreciated it. Coming in at number two, the runner up to the top dog is gonna be The Evil Dead, the first film that started the whole franchise and Sam Raimi and why this film eclipses Evil Dead Rise. Cause I'm gonna tell you, if I was to look at the films in a, I always forget subjective objective. I forget what the fuck one, which means what. But if I was to look at them honestly, like as a critic and tell you, Evil Dead Rise is clearly a technically more better made film. It's well made. It's got better acting, better story, all that stuff, better special effects. Like I said, on a technical level, Evil Dead Rise is better than the Evil Dead. But for me, what Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell and those young kids were able to do at that time with this film, very indie, low budget, you know, using like donation money from their father and stuff and, you know, kind of showing the film in like a drive-in theater, like, you know, very old school indie stuff. I love that. This film has a lot of history, strong atmosphere, and for one, I think it's actually scarier than the films lower down on this list. I actually think The Evil Dead, that first film, is kind of creepy. So for me, that's a film that, like I said, it stands the test of time, and no matter how many times I return to it, that nostalgia just grows and grows. So that's why it's sitting here comfortable at this number two spot.
And the top dog, the number one spot you know is going to Evil Dead 2013 because that's the king, that's the crown. It's hard to ignore how fucking amazing this film is because it is fucking fantastic. And yeah, I know I'm cussing a lot now because yeah, it, that's how amazing this film is. Evil Dead 2013, like I said, Slam Dunk is my favorite horror film of all time because when I think of horror, it's just everything I want a horror film to be and what I want it to give me this film gives me. Plus, I have a connection with the story as our lead character, Mia, is a recovering drug addict and her friends are trying to help her and, you know, take her to this cabin to, you know, stop her from taking drugs and really get her to beat this and, like, they want her to stay with this and commit. And the whole setup and the story is great. I love the characters and I'm more invested with these characters and that's why Evil Dead 2013 still sits at this top spot as the number one in the franchise but these are just my thoughts and my opinions on this franchise and evil dead rise spoiler thoughts let me know in the comment section what you thought of the film like i said don't be afraid you can drop spoilers down below for evil dead rise in terms of what you thought and also put your ranking for the franchise down below so we can discuss it but be sure you're also liked and subscribed to the channel so you get more videos and content like this and most importantly have a safe and happy day Peace out. <clears throat> oh, man.